Looks like it's six o'clock. Um, <clears throat> so I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, and, um, and just first thing on the agenda is adjustments to the select board agenda. Um, I have the Westwood Berry Cemetery. We can discuss that at, at some point. Yeah. Um, did you want to talk about the um, thing with Hardwick Electric and the zoning ordinance, or do you want to talk to the, our zoning administrator first, or probably we should talk to the zoning administrator? Okay, all right. So we won't we won't add that to the agenda. Um, and any public comment? Guess not. So. Um, we can't approve the bills to the town. Um, our town treasurer had an emergency uh, sometime today. Uh, she's not here, um, and the bills aren't prepared for us to review and, and approve. Um, so sometime during the week, I guess we'll, we'll wait to hear from Brandy about that. Um, so the minutes to for our last select board meeting on October 14th, um, are there any, any changes or anything that anyone to see any emissions, they're pretty bare bones this time. Yeah, it looked fine. Um, but I tried to cover everything that was um, needed to be covered. Everyone's okay with it? Yep. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we approve the um, select board meetings for October 14th, 2009. I have a second? Second. Okay, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we'll sign on the dotted line. Let's see. So, Diane, if you're ready for us, well, we can go on to other stuff. Um, Not a big deal. Yeah, I just want to check my email. Okay. All right. Generator. All right. So let's do that. Uh, I think I sent you guys the email about that, but I can go over it. Um, so, as of our last meeting, we were anticipating that um, Brookfield Services would be um, installing an automatic transfer switch for the emergency generator at the, t at the school. Um, and on, a, on a October 18th, which is a Friday, they came to do the work. Um, and discovered that the um, panel was not what they thought it was, um, so they weren't able to do the work. Um, and basically, I'll just briefly read the email that I got from um, Jim Brockhausen um, from Brookfield Service. Uh, your manual transfer switch is actually 400 amps, not 200 amps, as stated below in your email. Um, Larry and I thought that it was 200 amps, so we. Um, also, the current switch also feeds a 200 amp line and a 100 amp line. I think one to the school and one, one to, down to the fire station, fire station yeah. Yeah. which may be why on the panel it's 400 amps instead of 200 amps. Um, anyway, and neither of them have a fused overcurrent protection and do not meet code. With that said, we will requote you. So they sent us another quote um, to install a 400 amp. Um, ATS NEMA 3R, I don't know what that means. means. Exterior for outdoors. Okay. And then to build a pressure treated pedestal to mount the ATS and fuse disconnects to install 200 amp <coughs> and 100 amp fuse disconnects. So the price, uh, their bid price for this is $6,825. Yowzers. Yes. Um, and then it says they're planning to do the work on November 23rd, which is a mistake on their part. We're trying to clear that part up, but... You're trying to go sooner than that, or...? Well, the school would be... and that's a Saturday, for one thing. Oh, yep. Yeah. So, um, and I don't think they're planning on coming on... I think it was a kind of a typo mistake. Typo, okay. You want to find the actual but, date. And the, the school principal mentioned that November 11th, um, the that's school will be closed. Yeah, that's yeah. Veterans Day. Yeah, so maybe they could come then. But, um, you know, I guess what we need to do is decide, do we want to, I mean, it was $2,000 before, and now it's three times as much. Wow. More than three times. I'm trying to understand why you would need a fuse disconnect for the underground service laterals, because they're not, they don't have to be protected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's part of the code or what. But yeah, I know it's what I do. The yeah. The alternative is to have somebody from the fire de department come down and flip the manual switch whenever the power goes out in Woodbury. 
that would oh. be the alternative. Um, so what we had like, to do before. Oh, because yeah. Larry's not up there. Larry's to not. Do it Larry's anymore. not going to be doing it anymore. So, um, but you know, the fire department has plenty to do also. So, um, but that would that's one alternative to. Why don't Why don't we have them contact? Um, I'm just interested in the that fuse disconnect is going to be really expensive, as you mm -hmm. can see. Mm -hmm. um, it would behoove us maybe to have that meet with the electrical inspector who's going to have to look at it and make sure that that's what's required. Okay. Would that be Wayne? Or? It would, mm, for here, it would be John Black. Mm -hmm. If you have them get in touch with me, I can probably set up a meeting to meet okay. with them and John. I'd like to just make sure that we need to spend that kind of money. Okay. Yeah. I'm not convinced why you got to have the fuses. That, you know, mm -hmm. is it is on the ground lab. Well, it might be so. I just yeah. it was inspected when it was put in originally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, actually, why don't I just? I this is just a copy of what I have on the computer. You want to contact them? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much it, and that's okay. kind of the email trail leading up to that. Okay. Wow. So that went up a lot, didn't it? It did. Yeah. It was. It was like two thousand dollars before. What about having Don, that works at the school already, be the one to come down? Uh, I don't know how close he lives to the school. Top of town, Farm Road. Not that far. Um, well, You'd almost geez. need multiple people just because there's we a gotta come down about and, anybody. we got to come yeah. down and start ours, but we, I typically won't for four or five hours unless it's really right, cold out or something, yeah. or we have a yeah. call. Like, summer I don't need to bother, but winter, after four or five hours, we'll come down and yeah, so start the generator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've never had to worry about it because Larry always. Yeah, Larry, Larry, you know, always did it. Well, I'll, I think it makes more. We'll just I'll talk okay. to John. Okay. At the very least, and uh, make sure of what we got to have. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It just seems yeah. like a, that's a lot. That's four thousand bucks for switch. Yeah. So I will. Um, I'll email this person yeah. tomorrow and just um, this let them know that we're we're, right. we're going to cut contact an electrical I may I may be able to get John to come over here okay. tomorrow with me okay. and just take a look at okay. it. Okay. See if we can keep the cost down. Okay. Just quickly. All right. Okay, um, so let's see. Why don't we talk about the West Woodbury Cemetery? Um, you're all set? Okay. Why don't we do But the first thing is, I emailed you guys about the <coughs> the whole umbrella right. thing, the brown fields. Um, yep. It um, brown fields liability, which is a federal liability program, and we spent the five hundred dollars to join the program, and the ANR paid for uh, I don't know somewhere between four and eight thousand dollars for the another phase one study because our original phase one study was done like to begin the whole thing mm -hmm. years ago and those run out after six months so they did another one and they did a very extensive survey that was a lot of work and i don't know what that ended up costing but because it was so complicated down there there's just anyway so we got that those two things were done but now we've missed our six month window again for mm -hmm. the phase one it seems crazy that they would that Stone Environmental wants to charge um, another fourteen hundred dollars to redo the phase one, even though you know nothing has changed. <laughs> but you don't know whether somebody went in there and dumped a bunch of gasoline on the floor. <laughs> so anyway, mm -hmm. anyways, uh, both. Uh, so in addition to the cost of this, it would be another two-week delay for them to get it done. And if they did that, then we'd be still be eligible for the Brownfields liability. Both of the ladies from the Department of Environmental Conservation, the one that does the Brella program and the other one that does the uh, Petroleum Cleanup Fund, they think we're probably pretty safe not doing that because mm -hmm. the, sub the subject property has been studied to death. 
and uh, it's highly unlikely we're going to find anything else, even if we did. I mean, you, can you imagine what it would take to get federal money to pay? <laughs> so it's really up to you if you want to, if we should spend that money and lose another two weeks. Doesn't FEMA require? No, they it's don't. Nothing, this is not anything having to do with FEMA. So this won't chip or The whole phase one, <coughs> we started with the phase one. Was that to get the clean site? Got it, right, exactly. Okay. Just to get uh, the Woodbury Fund financed our first clean site, or our first phase one, which mm -hmm. led us to qualify for phase two with that uh, mm -hmm. money from the Regional Planning Commission, which ended up getting us our clean site. Well, that, that led into the whole cleanup, mm -hmm. and then that um, led us to get our clean site letter, and then we're back in FEMA. So that yeah. really, FEMA doesn't require any okay. of this stuff. Well, FEMA doesn't require it. I'm, I'm good. I yeah. highly doubt there's a problem that's been right. created in the there's last no, nothing, months. nothing really new, mm -hmm. except that it is sagging more. But, um, yeah, really. <laughs> so, would you like us to make a motion? Yeah, that would probably students? be a good idea um, to decide that you're not going to go ahead with the uh, third phase one environmental okay. site assessment. All right. So. Um, I would make a motion that the town of Woodbury does not go ahead with a third phase one study um, for the old store um, project. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, things are plugging along. Uh, Kirk was made well. He's going to come over last weekend, and he didn't. This I was hoping he would come over this past weekend, but he didn't. But in the meantime, Kim has signed the papers, and um, I just think, oh, I mean, Kirk wants to get more stuff out of the store, so he does have to do something within the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing to get a closing for November 9th, which is a Saturday, which Kirk asked for a Saturday, and mm -hmm. I want to make sure that that's good for him. Whether Sarah can do that or not, I I emailed her today. I said we really need to get this done. We need a couple work, couple of weeks of work at least before mm -hmm. snow flies. We have a March uh, March twentieth, I think, um, deadline for FEMA to get our project done, and then mm -hmm. we get another. Mm -hmm. and if we don't get we it done, we'll do it. We'll just go for it. Once he decides, winter and all, he's going to have to do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> So I've, I've um, asked them to do a more simplified, they sent this complicated settlement statement, which is a form that has all this different stuff on it. It has property transfer tax, which we don't have to pay. If, if Kim has already signed it, well, why? Well, she's the only one of the owners. Yeah, but isn't there something already ready to be signed? Yeah. Then you signed it, and she signed it. Okay. Now he has to sign it. Okay, and he's not able to come until November 9th. But she. Well, no, he said he hasn't said when he'll come. Okay. But he hasn't come yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. So whether or not he doesn't wait, waits and doesn't sign it until a minute before the closing, that that's okay. Because okay. well, we're not going to close without him signing. Right. Obviously. Right. Yeah. right. And no, he's not going to get his check for fifty yeah. thousand dollars mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. unless he signs it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm hoping, you know, I. Don't know if Sarah's gotten behind or not. But anyways, we're not going to have to pay property transfer tax. We're not going to charge recording fees. You guys already said we could waive this. I don't see any reason why we should pay for title insurance because we can't sell that can't property anyway. ever <coughs> anyway. So I'm hoping they can simplify. And uh, uh, FEMA wants the taxes paid, but I'm what they... What they've offered is fifty-seven five for the price, and fifteen hundred of that would go towards back taxes, and then the other six, the other, um, then we end up with fifty-six thousand, which is what they agreed to and mm -hmm. what they asked for. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we can maybe make it a little simpler, mm -hmm. and then the attorney's fees, whatever they ask for, you know, gotta pay that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I emailed the. I was that's why I went and checked my email to see what it. The attorney's office would be willing mm -hmm. to do that, and also possibility that if she's really behind because of her bereavement, maybe right. she could maybe have somebody else do the closing, like Chris Green, who's closer and mm -hmm. possibly more available on a Saturday. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, that might be a good alternative if she's, you know, because yeah. I can understand why she is behind. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. hoping that it seems like it would be cleaner if we could just write the checks rather than having all the money go to the lawyer's account and then come out. That's the way they, they usually do it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why we can't just give them the checks. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see. <laughs> they probably can't have it be that simple. Yeah, this is kind of strange. I mean, I, I didn't realize that that... That's, That's how they all do is every close yeah. the money goes mm -hmm. through the real estate yeah. office. Uh -huh. Like so you're getting make something back, up like the check it just seems seems estate. like as far as FEMA auditing and stuff like that, it would be cleaner if we just, you know, wrote the checks from here. Well, I guess they, they would <laughs> probably they would probably might wonder why it didn't go through the lawyer. No, um, well, I suppose that's a remote possibility. Mm -hmm. They also, well, the lawyer has $5,000 that we already paid for the deposit. Mm -hmm. Richard McCourt transferred it down to mm -hmm. Sarah Field's office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And the both of our contractors have applied for their permits. Um, Blue Mountain has applied for the... Uh, 1111 from mm -hmm. B-Trans and uh, Catamount Environmental has, well, they're using um, the other company there to do the uh, application to the Department of Health for the asbestos removal. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty much ready to go. So I don't know whether how long those permits take. I, well, she said that the um, 1111 wouldn't take long. The Department of Health, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. right. But they're using Clay Point Associates to do that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I better go. Uh, right, anything you. else? Good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get to ask your question. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to ask No. <laughs> she read it. <laughs> Has Kirk signed yet? <laughs> Not yet. <clears throat> and that's going to be our problem. Right along. Yeah. So let's um, let's talk about the West Woodbury Cemetery before we get on to the town highway report. Um, so Brian, do you want to kind of just fill us in on what's what's happening there? Or for, for uh, the yeah, general? sure. Bear Bissett had reached out through uh, Dan Fushang to me, and he would like to donate some land in the mm -hmm. West Woodbury Cemetery because it's full now, mm -hmm. and uh, so we've talked a little bit about it. For a mm -hmm. while now, but it's kind of almost time that we've got to start doing something, doing something either to get a survey done, or and the question is whether we just involve the cemetery commission or mm -hmm. we just deal with it and make it happen. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if he wants to survey done or if he just wants to mark off, right. you know, 30 by 40 feet or whatever. I haven't talked to Bear directly, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, but we should accept it. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think she'd like her to work through the cemetery commission. Yeah, I, I really think she should work, the loop. work through them, and um, you know that that they want to accept it, and that they, you know, I mean, they should be the ones pretty much um, coming to us to ask us. <laughs> <and> <laughs> this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. So who is in the cemetery commission now besides Richard? Uh, uh, Richard, um, Patty Garbeck, um, Pat DeGorza, um Pat his father. Yep, I think so. Um, Annette Tavekalian. Tavekalian? Yeah, Tavekalian. She may have not been on it anymore. And then, um, I don't know his last name, but his first name is Lee. He's um, part of the Shawshan Temple out on uh, Kermie Meadow Road. He's a priest there. I can't remember his last name. Yeah, I would prefer, and I, I guess so, the, the way I'm trying to figure out how to proceed here, whether we should have, maybe get a hold of Richard. He seems to be the lead person. The lead person um, and um, have him contact Bear or have Bear contact him. And, well, and then maybe just kind of follow up on that so it doesn't... Yeah. I'm sure that something happens, because um, I don't have total trust <laughs> right at the moment <laughs> in the Cemetery Commission. Um, yeah, because yeah, most of our commissions are pretty
pretty low key, but mm -hmm. it doesn't say it was mowing. Well, they, after they're kind of non functional, oh, Carolyn Carolyn's on it too? Yeah. Grady, Sheila, Dan St. John. I oh, like the Historical Society. Oh. Okay, yeah. So there it is. Patty, McAhagan, Sheila, Richard, and then that. Yeah. So Sheila is no longer. Um, and, um, Put in. Lee, Lee is his first name. I don't know his last name. But yeah, we should make some contact with him and find out. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to contact Richard? And, or yeah, get hold of Richard. Let him know what. See if he wants to go out and meet with Bear or whatever. Right. And then, if, you know, I guess Richard could find out from Bear if he does want to, if it, you know, it should be surveyed. And in a way, after dealing with the top of Old Quarry Road, it yeah. makes sense that <laughs> it, Just to do that it. it is surveyed. So there's no kind question of question about what's where. What's yeah. where and who's what and. Make sure all the deeds are proper and just yeah. go through the process. Yeah. Yeah. So, and maybe they would have money in their budget. Um, for the survey, <laughs> the deeds file. We just look up. They got like six grand or something. Six. Well, it, it was listed in the town report from last year that they had oh. sixteen thousand dollars. Sixteen thousand. So they should have so enough. Seems like they could have yeah. enough. So we'll just kind of go from there. You'll contact Richard, and yeah. and, and we'll see what happens. Um, and then you know, if you want to kind of. Email you keep, guys, yeah. Yeah, or, or keep involved with it. If you know if Richard is going to meet with Bear, and, and you would have the time on just to kind of make sure that that it's happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If I get a meeting with the two of them, or yeah. find out from, and talk to Bear and see if what is what mm -hmm. he's feeling, is yeah. how much he wants to donate or mm -hmm. whatever. And, yeah. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, okay. Okay, on to the town highway report. So um, I wanted to revisit the Burwar purchase um, and for a variety of reasons. Um, and the, the first um, first thing I want to let you guys know is that the obviously the road crew was a little disappointed in our not purchasing the mower um, brush cutter. Um, and they're sort of feeling now that, you know, and it was something that we discussed that um, that they feel that the burner wouldn't get used that much also and, and that, the, you know, that we have the equipment with the bucket loader and the grader to, um, to do the burning work. Um, and, you know, I agree and they agree that there is a burning problem. The inventory that we did on the town highway pointed that out. Yeah. But they, they feel that they could do the work um, with the bucket loader and the grader, and they, they would rather have the money that's in the HERF fund that would go towards the burner to stay in the HERF fund towards a uh, uh, used larger grader that could do that work, the burning work, um, a little bit easier than the present one that we have. Yeah. But um, my fear of anything is you buy a piece of equipment and it doesn't get used. Right, that's, right. That's, I guess my question to that is then he needs to come up with a plan. Right. And that's because this was a, a, an attempt at getting a solution. So yeah. he needs to come up with to a do plan. More. Yeah. How because I, I just don't see it. Right. One thing one thing that Gray mentioned and it's I've also thought of a, a, a plan too is that um, you know, he has basically and it's both Greg's that feel feel you know, it's not just Greg Parkins, it's Greg Adams too that would prefer that we go the other route and, and not purchase the Burmer. Um, but, you know, in the inventory, one of the things that uh, did come up in the inventory is that there are a number of sections of road, and this is hydrologically connected sections, that's what the inventory was dealing with, it, where the, basically the only problem are the berms. Um, and, you know, Greg mentioned that, well, you know, he's kind of been from all of this miserable road stuff, he's been really focused on the ditching and the culverts, um, you know, which um, 
and he's you know he's he told me that it will if, if the berm work is something that we should also be doing that you know and the ditching and culvert work is pretty close to most of the trouble spots are just about dealt with at this point but you know that the berming work also takes time um, so that he would like for next summer he would focus as much or more on the berming work and kind of you know pull back a little bit on the ditching and color work um, and the, the, you know, the inventory um, that we have you know is basically the template for putting together a plan in fact um, that's something that um, that uh, I had promised the Regional Planning Commission that I would do. We have to, from the inventory, the town has to come up with a five-year plan to deal with um, the high-priority sites. Right. And, you know, we have not really come up with a plan, but we have been dealing with the high-priority sites. Um, uh, you know, a number of those sites got dealt with this summer, despite a plan. But, so what I'm thinking is is that we would put together a plan over the winter. We need to do this five-year plan, um, and I need to get information from the Regional Planning Commission on the sections of road where the berm were the only problems. Um, and we could have that as part of the plan for next summer's work to start dealing with, um, you know, those problems and, and, you know, using, again, using the bucket loader and the grader to do that work. Um, and you know another thought that I'm having in in, in not purchasing the Burma is that um, you know I had thought and all along that uh, we could finance the whole thing, both of the pieces of equipment, with the amount of money that we spend on the more. Um, and that, that became when that became obvious, it didn't happen. And I really would like to try to you know we're going to be working on a budget and very soon. I really would like to try to leveled you know have the budget be pretty much um, level if and if just because of the i've been you know diana has mentioned different tax complaints and um so you know just having another expense um yeah and you know there's just so many unexpected expenses that seem to pop up every year you know we've got our lawyers fees for the spur and the underground storage tank Above ground tank, um, you know that wasn't expected, um, but that'll be part of this fiscal year. Um, so I'm just feeling like the the frugal thing to to be would be to try to to um, back off um, on purchasing the bermer, but to come up with a plan for dealing with the berm problem. Because yeah. you know I agree that there is a problem and we need to start addressing it. Um, yeah, because that's my only comment is is uh, if this isn't the solution, then he needs to come up with one. Because mm -hmm. you know the definition of insanity is to keep trying the same thing and you're going right. to get for different results. Right. You know, so yeah. unless he makes a concerted effort mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. to to deal with it, you know, that's all I'm saying is if we're not going to do this, yeah. right. then we need a solution that is going right. to work. Somebody needs to be in the grader doing more ditching. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's uh, somehow we get to a measurable. Goal yeah. too to say you know there's X amount of this is going to get because if we're going to do it in five years we got to have right. a measurable and it's not reasonable to conclude that you're going to not do any ditching or not do any culvert replacement so it's, right. I, I guess my interest is to see well, see I, the plan yeah I think what what Greg was suggesting is that we you know we meaning the select board and the road crew um, kind of s not totally switch a focus but add you know. Make sure that there's plenty of time allotted for the berm work. Because, you know, the spots where it's grown up to sod... Um, it's a big mess, yeah. You, you basically need the bucket loader to, right. to cut through that, and then the grader can, you know... So he's, you know, he's suggesting that we have a plan where, okay, so maybe, uh, you know, like Valley Lake Road going down to Kirklands, that definitely needs to be ditched, and there's uh, maybe a color or two... Um, they've done so a lot of work on that road have, in the last few years, years too. Like so, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, and there was a lot of there's been a lot. Of, I mean, the focus. I mean, you look at the culvert expense in our. In our yeah, we've been doing a lot, which they needed yeah. desperately. Yeah. Needed. Yeah. Yep. So there would be less focus on that, mm -hmm. and switching, and then so, but there would wouldn't be a complete kind of turning away from that, but also more of a focus on the burn work, and. Um, 
and then keeping them because like where he's cleaned yeah. as long as they grade properly they should right. be able to keep those berms off yeah yeah you got a great elevator i mean i got i i'm the same as like, I, I have mixed feelings about the device because right. if it's not used i don't want to pay for something but on the other hand i have got to do something different yeah. right yeah we, gotta, we do have to address i, mean, I think i said that at the last meeting and said yeah. no this is yeah. the solution we didn't mean yeah. something that is we, we do have to address the burial part because i've been hearing about that ever since i've been on the <laughs> In this so, you see the, the power runners, you, you grade it, and then the water stays, runs down the road, yeah. it tears it all up, and we're spending yeah. the money over and over again so yeah. we can address it. Yeah. yeah, we need to address it with the work and the better yeah. grading, mm -hmm. you know, maybe yeah, more grading. a component of getting yeah. the grading done correctly, because yeah. you can't just grade up to the edge, you've got to grade over that, yeah. that force slope and get the, yeah. the material back on the road every, every time. Yeah. Because if you just miss it once, you're going to have a burn yeah. And the grader we have does that. Oh, yeah. It's not yeah. like we need a new no. grader to right. do this ditching no. right yeah. there. So it's, yeah. Well, a, a stronger, larger grader could do the work quicker, I think, is part right. of the Right. Because I talked to Grizz about that if yeah. you had a, in a four wheel drive or six yeah. wheel drive yeah. grader. Yeah. And maybe we keep our eyes open. I would rather put the money towards that yeah. than. Well, that, that's a, every now and then they find a used grader. Um, hundred fifty thousand dollars, as opposed that's to like three hundred yeah. plus thousand for sure. a new one. You know, so it would definitely be a used. And I'm open to the idea as long as they're going to get it to us. Right. Yeah. So we know. Right. I don't want. I always ever hear when it's over with. It's like, oh, right. I'm yeah. Yeah. Well, we, they always see it and then oh, there's no money to spend. Yeah. Do you get a brand new toy? They'll be in it every day. <laughs> yeah, well, and and I'm, I'm back. He also needs. To, I didn't seem to do any time training the newer people on the grader. Well, um, Peter we actually did quite a bit of. Uh, yeah, we need to get all the employees yeah. trained on the grader. Like, yeah. We're going to get we get stuck with a woke situation, right? Or something uh, leaves and we can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you know, I drive around now that I kind of know what to look for. You know, you drive through back roads on Hardwick or Callis, and oh, they have a burning problem too. I mean, yeah, you can a, see where they have a huge address. problem. Yeah, yeah, it's not just because over you're spreading all that material in the winter, mm -hmm. and then it kind of everything kind of migrates to the outside, and then you need to pull it all back in and mix it back yeah. up and yeah. and there's also the opportunity to hire subcontractors to do some ditching True. for us ditching at times burning. too yeah. yeah that's what i'm just saying he needs to come at us with a plan yeah okay because my frustration has been this when we mentioned subs he always says we can't our contract you can't use them anywhere mm -hmm. or we come up so why well, i can't do that so that was a, if, if i can't come up with the plan he right. needs to come up yeah. with a plan yeah, yeah. yeah. I well, always, we did that years ago we had a Somebody we hired with an right. excavator, and they would do a section of road for us because right. these mm -hmm. guys are busy with mm -hmm. the two-man right. crew. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. But he needs to say that's okay. He needs but if we're gonna have three men, they got to be a productive three. Right. right. Yeah. And yeah. that's been mm -hmm. the issue. Have you seen the sand pile we've got? Yeah, they pretty much hauled all of. I don't the think sand I've ever fish. seen one that huge. No, we has, oh, we have looked at. <laughs> it is full. Yeah. <laughs> they, I think Greg said mentioned on Friday that. I think they have like maybe 400 more yards and then that fulfills They've still got more project. to put in? 400, that's a lot of sand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he, he we thinks, shouldn't have to buy sand next year. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> you know, that's for... Are we on the last year of our sand contract? No, we have two more. Okay. I think we have two more years. And you know, usually they haul what they can and then there's more on the fiscal year, let's call it 20, that, you know, they haul more in the summer for what they weren't able to to, you know, to max out on the contract yeah. for so they should have all of the sand, winter sand, for fiscal year 20 there, I think, before winter really hits, depending oh, on... They say they've been all the sand still, yeah. Yeah, and having the yeah, wire... Have, having, I'll go check it out. Yeah. yeah, having the wire, moving the wire like we did, allows them to build up the pile. Wire, yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so they won't be hauling sand until beginning of the fiscal year next year, yeah. um, you know, July for, for the coming winter. And they'll have plenty, you know, they'll have to they have plenty left over still, yeah. Depending on what the winter's like. Yeah. 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 But still it's not going to snow till January. You know, it's, it's <coughs> mild, mild right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's the same about plan. I mean, that's, he's got this winter and I'm, we're all more than happy to work with him. Right. Okay. But he's got to be more receptive to yeah. taking okay. feedback and I'll, I'll suggestions. I'll pass that on to him. So I would make a, I would like to make a motion that we um, vote to um, postpone, table, whatever, whatever the proper term is, the um, purchase of the Burmer, um, or put it on hold, let's say, um, like we did the uh, mower or brush cutter, for this fiscal year. Um, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay.
and I'd yes. like to make a motion that okay, uh, go right ahead. That we, yeah, <laughs> have a plan in place mm -hmm. to deal with the berms. Okay, that spells out Fair specific enough. actions to be taken and mm -hmm. dates that will be accomplished mm -hmm. by. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a tough time with dates, so. But yeah, some kind of idea. We just can't yeah. leave it that. Yeah. Because we're never gonna get there. Yeah. And what I found in my own life is you got to. You had to mm -hmm. set some goals, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. if you don't always reach them, but at least you had something yep. to measure by. Mm -hmm. So it would be to, to set some kind of measurable yep. goal. Okay. Yep. To, so we can measure it, so we can know yep. we're doing mm -hmm. good or we're not doing mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. and have yeah. that in place. And if our grader is a problem for getting this work done, maybe it's time we started looking a little heavier towards a better grader. Well, I think, you know, as we build up the HERF fund, um, if we can get a you know, and it'll build up pretty quickly um, because we won't be making truck payments in the next, well, we'll be making one truck payment um, yeah. and a small bucket loader payment. So we'll, we'll be um, able to sock some money away pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. Pretty fast, so yeah. um, still like another year or two or? Well, of course, longer. you know, we do have another truck also to replace coming yeah. down the line. But yeah, but yeah I would, so I would. Probably I should finish my motion then we'll. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah so before try we, to have that in yeah. place by the 31st. Yeah, 31st of March. Does that sound reasonable? That sounds reasonable. Yeah. yeah. I'll the stop. Plan. <laughs> the plan. The <laughs> plan. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah, because we'll have uh, one. We've still got one truck payment, right, and the bucket loader payment. We have the low pro that we're paying on, but the other two, the 2013 and 2014, um, are paid for. Are paid for. So in fiscal year 21, we won't have those payments. Yeah, because hopefully we can. So, my, my my hope was to push that other 10-wheeler a little further down the road. Yeah, it would be it. nice if we could push one out a year yeah, or yeah, so. Well, yeah, well, if they've got a seven-year, eight-year replacement site, so we'd want to try to yeah. get those close to yours, and yeah. you're only buying one truck at a time. That would yeah. be my goal. I know we're not going to do it right. on the first. We push it a couple years. and My, my hope is that we can push it a couple Spread years. Out. Yeah. We'll, we'll get less, you know, as a trade-in, but that's, yeah. you know, so Just hard. try to get those trucks, yeah. their replacement cycle apart. So you got a new one and you got an old one. Yeah, and we might we might save up enough money through the HER fund if if a used grader shows yep. up for one hundred fifty thousand, we would have a significant right. chunk that we could use to towards that, which would be a small a smaller loan, which would be a smaller payment. Yeah, um, and I'm yeah. in favor of that. Mm -hmm. if I've yeah. heard that if we're not not just the road crew, I've heard from yeah. others in the town that they yeah. use the grader. This is it would be a bad purchase. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so let's see, next on the, um, so the Buck Lake Brook um, Cabin Road Repair, um, I think it would be worth mentioning, um, you know, again, Paul, what you shared with us before the meeting yeah. started, Larry. I received a complaint, Ronnie yeah. Rapper, and was yeah. looking at what was going on up on the road there and felt that the stone was too small, so I hiked up with him and went down in the hole and he, I tend to agree with them. It's the same size material that washed down the brook and we just dug out. Mm -hmm. So I think probably need to get Shauna up to look at it. Yeah. I'm not an engineer. Ronnie's frustrated that it's all going to be down behind his garage in the culvert, which yeah. I couldn't argue. It's the same size stone that we yeah. dug out down below. So I'm surprised that Shauna and Jaron looking at that and hearing his, his plan um, that they didn't raise that concern. Yeah. I'm really kind of surprised at that. But. So I tend to agree with Ronnie. I think if you go look at it, you'll see the same thing I'm seeing. If that lower material washes out, there's nothing to hold it there. It's all going to come down. It'll all be down there. We'll be digging it out of the... Yeah. Yeah. So um, I will call Shauna first thing in the morning. Yeah, see if we can get her up to take a look yeah. at it. And yeah. see. Ronnie's particularly affected because it'll yeah. all be right behind his garage. Yeah. So, yeah. And he's also had, in the best position to have watched that brook for... Yeah. Yeah, three decades. She she had mentioned to me. I, I had a follow up conversation with her on Friday morning uh, last week after the me the meeting there, and she said, you know, go up and take a look at it, which I haven't had a chance to do, and said, if there are any concerns, to call me. Yeah. So um, there's plenty of weight of material there. So a lot of times they'll try to load those banks with heavy stone mm -hmm. to hold the bank, and I think it'll yeah. do that. But the fear is it's not going to stay. It starts scooping out right. the bottom. It's all going to come down. Yeah. Well, the original plan was to have either some granite blocks from That's the quarry great or great big stone, great yeah, big material to, to, to know, basically be a base people. for all that that stone that's there. Um, yeah. So I don't. I I'm surprised that Sean and Jared um, thought that that would be okay, but. Um, anyway, we'll we'll let them know our concern. Yeah. Um, and I know I think he was probably planning on being done tomorrow too. So. Um, oh really? Yeah, he wow. said it wouldn't. 
taken more than four days at the most, but uh, I haven't looked, gone up to see where, where he's at. Um, okay, so let's see what we can do about that. Um, and I think, you know, it's basically up to us. If we don't feel that what's been done is, is okay, then, you know, we can dictate the terms. And, and the fact that in the original scope of work, those blocks were called for. Um, I think right, I don't know if Sean accepted that or... That was, that was from, that was a V-Trans engineer, that was yeah. their design. Um, What's, what it is right now? No, or the first um, one. The yeah. first one, right. Because yeah. it's one. definitely not that. It's right. just small. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, you know, the reason for that meeting last Thursday was that um, Daryl Matthews, the contractor that's doing the work, thought you know, he had a different idea or a different plan and he wanted to check it out with Sean and Jaren, so that's why the meeting happened. Um, and uh, they must have uh, felt that what he had come up with was okay. Uh, they, Maybe he put some more pins in the bottom that they no, don't just see? Some, or, just yeah. some rebar. Yeah. yeah. Not going to hold those, st those stones. You know. No, particularly when you stand at the bottom right, so that water be way over my head, it gets up a lot higher on the bank. It's just a little yeah. gully. It's a gully, so. Yeah. They did inspect concrete blocks. In the original no, that was, well, it was either concrete blocks or blocks from Swenson granite blocks. Yeah, and cool. yeah it was yeah, supposed to be big material. Yeah. You'd, you'd think that bottom eight or ten feet would want to be those big, big stones yeah. and the water can't move as easily. Yeah. Because yeah. he's got stones that are the and size the of this desk almost, mine's garage that the water has moved some of them. Yeah, and the rebar was supposed to hold those big yeah. blocks in place and, and, um, and then the, the other stone would be on top yep. and the water probably wouldn't reach. So if it fails, is there a recourse for us? Well, um, I think we're, we should... That's our conversation yeah. with Shauna, because if... if uh, we should demand that the blocks yeah. be there, because yeah. we know what... <laughs> yeah, Ronnie's, we know I, I trust there. Ronnie's judgment on this, because yeah. he's yeah. looked at it long yeah. enough. Well, yeah, I mean, what happened... I know we're sitting here in two years, because it might be two to three or four years where we have enough water in there again to cause the yeah. issue, yeah. and we'll have paid for it, and they'll say, well, you already used up your grant money, it'll be gone again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we just have to apply for more grant money right. to do the same yeah. thing yeah. all over again. So let's try to do it right. Yep. Yeah. Begin with. Yep. And so I'm sure if you grab him at the shop, he'd be more than happy to meet with her. Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be a wise move. Yeah. Him to come up with whoever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be able. Again, I have a full day of work tomorrow, so I wouldn't be yeah. able to be there. But yeah, it depends. I might if it depends on when. Okay. I'm out in the morning. Okay. But all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sean, I am. Uh, I mean, I don't know what time he's been showing up to start his work there um, either, but... I've, I've seen, seen him at 7.30ish yeah, up there, getting ready to go or whatever, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay, well, I'll call, I mean, I know that I learned from Harry that to connect with Shauna, you call her about between 6.30 and 7. Okay. So I'll leave her, yeah. I'll, I'll leave her a message um, tonight and to let her know that I need to talk to her first thing in the morning and hopefully she's... She'll be in the office. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we'll just go up and, um, you know, meet with Daryl and tell him that we, you know, we we got to have those big blocks and they just don't understand the way the water, because the water is really channeled through there. Yeah, it's just really narrow, and then when yeah. it fills up, apparently when it gets enough uh, material, enough yeah. water, it'll take that. And it yeah. Starts so there's the a lot of force behind that water when it's mm -hmm. channeled in that in that last ravine yeah. down to the village. Um, okay, so. Um, the underground storage tank, above ground storage tank, um, I think that's pretty much behind us now. Is um, it all in and done? I think so. I haven't, I haven't made it over there today, but the underground tank was removed last um, Thursday. And there were no problems with that. There was no, you know, the site assessment didn't show any contaminated soil. That's um, good. Nice. Yep. So the, the road crew did the, the labor of removing the tank. The, um, Site assessment person was there. They decommissioned the tank, um, so it's in the scrap pile with the old <laughs> rusty culverts now. And then the road crew filled in the hole, um, banked it up, uh, made forms for a cement pad um, that got poured on Friday. Um, and the above ground tank was being delivered today. Oh, good. Yeah, so and you know the guy, the Gillespies wanted two or three days for the cement to set. Um, which it should have, you know, by Friday afternoon. Yeah, before they fill it. So I would imagine the tank is um, on the pad, um, and they're trying to get Tim Higgins to come and do the wiring. Um, yeah. 
be, they're using an extension cord right now, but the, we're going to use the old pump in the underground tank. So um, there should be, we shouldn't be, um, other than the price of the cement, which I don't know, is about a, a one and a half yards. Um, and then um, the row crew plans on building a canopy for it, um, just to, you know, for winter time. Um, it's not, re idea. not required, um, but it would, I think it would kind of make things a little easier to lose the tank. Mm -hmm. and Is it next to the building? It's where the underground storage tank was. Okay. So it's not, there's, you can drive a truck through between the building and the above ground tank. So they're just going to build a small little yeah, cover just, over the tank? Yeah, just to keep yeah. the snow and ice off. Okay. Okay. Probably have it slope one way so it goes, instead of going towards the garage, it'll go into the into yeah, there, come off the building with it all the way out through. Mm, that wasn't the Probably plan, not. no. Okay. no. Depending on that. So we'll have, um, we'll have a, about $2,100 cost for the removal of the underground storage tank. Um, and then we'll have some materials cost for um, the canopy, which may or not, may not get done this winter. I, I guess it depends on the weather. Yeah, we'll have yeah. cold it gets out soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know minimal costs for the uh, wiring. For the wiring, yeah. So um, I think we could probably there is a loan, a zero interest loan that we could take, but it's such a small yeah. amount. I think we'll just just pay it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we don't have to go through the the loan process. Um, let's see, is anything else? So, and of course, the tank belongs to Gillespie, um, so there's no charge for that. And and we have a commitment now with them for at least five years to yep. purchase the off-road diesel from them. Um, which I think, I don't think we're going to get. No, they've been the winner every year. Yeah, they've been the winner every year. They've been submitting so, um. Okay, um, next is the Valley Lake Road Fire Department Annex. Um, a group of us met uh, last week and um, have a temp again, another temporary plan. Um, to, for this coming winter, um, the road crew is going to grade the road, um, lower it down, and, and kind of scoop out the gravel that's grown into the swale that's there. Um, and uh, Greg was going to try to do that this Saturday, but with the weather forecast for Sunday, he just figured if he did that, it would be just a Quagmire. Um, it looked like they might have got. I did, I glanced he, over. He's done something to it. I haven't. I didn't okay, know today, yeah, because it sounds like we're going to have a couple days without rain if, if they have, and then more rain on Thursday. So if they maybe they did get to some of it today, or and maybe t more tomorrow. He also has a plan, um, and I checked with the uh, school principal about this to stake off the corner, um, you know, where the driveway that goes up into the school parking lot. Uh, a lot of people cut instead of you know swinging out and going into the. They're cutting across. They're cutting right yeah. across, and so that's spewing gravel down. I'm kind of ruining the the channels for the water to get behind the uh, annex building. So he's he's going to stake that off for winter time, um, and then is looking for a nice big quartz, white quartz granite or boulder yeah, that you kind of put he, he there. He found he found a concrete. Oh, he, he's block. Okay. It's up there. It's about that long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's he's sitting there. right on the edge of there. Okay. Their Great. corner. So, yeah. Got it. Okay. So, so and he's he he's it. he's thinking that that might help with the uh, gravel that kind of washes into the soil. Got it. Um, so we'll see. And I've been um, I contacted the regional planning commission about this uh, engineering that we supposedly got a grant right. for we that, seen any money that for hasn't that. happened yet, um, and I. I got uh, an email back from the person from the Regional Planning Commission um, and I'm going to try to connect with her um, to talk a little bit more about it um, in the next couple of days. There also, um, we, a few years ago, we applied for a Better Roads grant um, to do that, um, to address that problem. Um, and at that point in time, we didn't have any plans or you know it was it was kind of a last minute thing let's see if we can get some money to to pay for an en engineering work here uh, and we didn't get the grant um, but uh, uh, the better road grants are um, out now and I think um, I think there's like we have till the end of November um, to, 
So in talking with the person from the Regional Planning Commission, if, if this looks like it's something where the, you know, we've got the grant, but this whoever from the state, um, I'll just blame the state in general on this, yeah. I guess, um, is sitting on that money um, so that this engineering isn't happening, then um, we might be able to do something through a better road. So we now have the, the watershed um, consulting um, design, 30% design plans for the for two of the, what they are, you know, are addressing as part of the problem there, the school parking lot and the, that kind of uh, catch basin drainage thing behind the annex building. Um, those two things are supposed to address that. Um, so we have a 30% design plan that we can put into this Better Roads Grant, so and that might help our possibilities. And um, So I'm going to pursue that um, this week. Um, to see if um, that would be a possibility. Again, that wouldn't be something that wouldn't happen again until next next right. summer, next spring. Because um, we apply for the grants now, and they're, I think the awards come uh, in the spring. Um, any, I know we you have might to... Make so, so just for clear, yeah. I'm going to, reason chance I'm going to I'm yeah. divesting myself of the okay. issue to make it simpler for everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Chance is the president, so he'll be on it instead of me. Okay, okay. Um, but I still have an interest because I'm dealing with the paving, so my right. I'll deal with just that part of it. If we can get mm -hmm. a resolution over the winter so we could implement it in the spring, mm -hmm. then I can include um, potentially paving that section of the road uh, right. with the parking lot, which will give us a little more payment and get us a few more eligible mm -hmm. bidders because we're just a little bit under the the threshold for some of the contractors yeah. we might want. Yeah, I would. I would love to see both of those pieces yeah. paved next year. Yeah. Um, so th that would be so great. So I'd like yeah. to try to get that proposal out, mm -hmm. like in March. Yeah. By the end of March, kind of what they were saying, if you want to try to do it in the spring or early summer, yeah. which is good for us, you'll get a little better price, yeah. and you might actually get it done if we wait till later in the year. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to be. And we have plenty of money in the paving we fund, do. according to the two yeah. estimates that we, we do. got from Norm. Yeah, so so that would be my focus, and then I'll let Chance handle that. Well, as I say, it sounds like we've gotten a fairly decent solution here with the work that Greg's done now, mm -hmm. and if if the Better Roads grant would cover whatever this other problem is mm -hmm. with the funding, then it sounds like yeah. we'd be we'd be solving yeah. the problem, yeah. and then you'd be able to pave all that. So right, that would solve that problem as well. Be deal with all yeah. the I, I don't know if this better roads grant will, but right. I'm thinking that it might. I'm hope, and I should know. Hopefully, by the next select board meeting, I'll have. I'll call Alan May. Um, he's a, you know he has looked at the site. He's we've had a number of people come and look at it. Um, and it, it is hydrologically connected, and so all of the better road grants now. Um, also, the uh, one of the conditions for getting a grant from them is that this piece of the road that you're working on have to be hydrologically connected, and it definitely is with yep. the Kingsbury Branch right there. So, um, and it had been recommended that the um, other that other it's not a catch basin, but whatever it's called, a distributor that would go between the post office and the fire department. The people that did the, the consulting work um, for these erosion problems suggested that a better way we approach better roads for that. Um, so I know that they this is something that they would do. Um, okay. Okay. So, uh, so do you want me to swing back in November or how do you what do you want me to do? I don't want to okay. be up here uh, Right. Your backside too much. Because we just no, want no. to resolve. <laughs> no, I, I will keep you posted, and if there, if we need to discuss something, I will. Okay. I'll get in get in touch with you. And I'll obviously be on it because I want to deal with the pavement. Right. For sure. Yeah. I think we can solve both problems in the yeah. spring. And yeah. so I want to talk to the person from the regional planning commission, um, and and I need you know, and then I'll, I'll also call uh, Alan May Better Roads, and um, if they can't guarantee me that we would have the, the engineering, you know. Because this engineering will include those those uh, erosion um, diffuser things. Yeah, yeah, things which you know, if we if if they if we don't have a guarantee that um, we can get those in place, um, I'm just going to try to get a better roads grant for the engineering to just to get fix, the road issues. Fix those. Because I think we can do that other solution after. Right. Yeah. The other will just take time. Yep. You know. Um, so just make sure the school down. To the yeah. brook. Yeah, just and we'd still dump the water off, but yeah. it wouldn't yeah. solve the the 
they want that. If you, it's just like what they put by the bridge in East Montpelier. Yeah, right. Yeah. Kind of a concrete, septic-looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you guys, you guys have seen the pictures yeah. of them. I can't yeah. remember what they're. You can go look at it. It's one of yeah. them down next to the yeah. new bridge, and it looks like it's going to catch the water and hold it, and then kind of yeah. leach it out into the soil. Yeah. So that's our that's our plan at the moment, and, and we'll see what. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if Greg finished that today or if he was going to work on it some more tomorrow. It looks like he probably didn't finish, but yeah, he yeah. put a good chunk into it. So yeah, it's, he will look been, at it tomorrow, yeah, I guess. Yeah, he would have been involved in the, like, the, the tank a bit today, I would imagine. So Yeah, I got back late tonight, so I was looking at it yeah. in the dark. I drove by and went, whoop, right. well, something happened. <laughs> something happened, okay. I know he wants to get it done before he heads off. He goes off deer hunting. Deer hunting, yeah. so. I went up and turned around, that's how I saw the concrete block. Uh -huh. so. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you saw it. Yep, it's there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sounds like he's on to it. Um, so the old Cory Road spur hearing. Um, Thank I you. Have, have a good night, yeah. I don't have much about the hearing nice. itself, but I did contact um, Lisa Gannett, who is a surveyor over in Cabot. Yep. She was recommended to us um, by um, Michael. Uh, the lawyer, our town, we'll, we'll call him our town lawyer, um, the fellow that came to the hearing. Um, I did talk to Russ Brown about it, and he's away on vacation. Um, he, you know, he had done a rough survey of it after um, a couple of years after um, the spur was built. Um, he, he didn't feel that um, he felt he could do it, but he didn't have kind of up to date GPS equipment to get if depending on what the V trans, you know, how accurate. Um, yeah. The place more. has worked for us before. She, yeah, she mentioned that she had. Um, yeah. um, I don't remember which one some, it was, but I don't. Yeah. Know what the yeah. yeah. So so anyway, um, she came. I met with her last Thursday. Um, she looked at the, what we have for um, uh, the surveying that's been done, um, and then we went up and looked at the site. Um, she said this would be pretty quick and simple to do. Um, yeah. She sent us a bid estimate of um, $1,650 to do the work. Yeah. Um, so um, I guess, um, and I think I, I'm pretty sure I sent this on to you guys. It's pretty brief if you want to look at it now. But basically, she, I would, saw that, yeah. Yeah, she would survey, um, let me just read what she would do. Um, This will include two hours of research in the Woodbury land records to prove ownership of the surrounding properties, a survey showing the new road center line and right-of-way limits um, based on the class 4 road standards for uh, right-of-way limits, setting monuments in order to delineate the proposed boundaries of the town highway being opened, providing Vermont State playing grid coordinates for the reference system of the survey, and preparation of a plat of the new road to be recorded in the Woodbury land records. So it would be pretty thorough and it would definitely pass the muster of VTRANS for um, town highway. Um, so, um, so now that that's kind of officially our road, we've got to put the stop sign back up there. Once it is. Once it is. Also yeah. still it's not, not, yeah, not officially yeah. okay. yeah. we, we still, okay, just to, yeah, um, this um, I mean, Michael Turant recommending that we have a survey done. That would be behoove us in, in the if if Coleman doesn't challenge the hearing um, results um, and decision from the hearing. Um, kind of time frame, do you know that he's got? Yeah. Well, we have 60 days from the hearing from the hearing to um, present a decision. Um, okay. I still have to review the. Um, the uh, hearing recording um, to get a little bit more detail in the draft minute hearings that I put together for our last meeting when we met with Michael. Yeah. I haven't done that yet. And we um, needed this. And we would need this regardless if, yeah. if, if uh, Coleman challenges the hearing decision, um, it's going to go to court and we would, this would be necessary for that. And this would be and if he doesn't challenge the decision, we would have to do, we should, I mean, yeah, do we it should right. do this. Yeah. I mean, it should have been done back when we only built the, the spur in the first place. Um, so, so having the survey um, 
and having the decision, um, uh, whether it's through a court hearing or through through the um, decision that we would put out, um, then then it would be the towns. It okay. could never be blocked again um, legally. Um, Which you still don't feel we should put a stop sign up there? No, not till it's all it's not ours yet. Okay. No, not till it's ours. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, my understanding is that you know we have 60 days, and we'll you know we'll get this done well within the 60-day limit. Um, I think as soon as I can revise those minutes um, and then we approve them, um, we'll, we'll be good to go. Um, and then the, Michael will write the decision for us. Yeah. Um, so um, um, I think Coleman would have 30 days. I think to it's either I think it's 30 days to file. Um, with the Washington County Superior Court for um, challenging mm -hmm. hearing decision. And then, of course, we would have to get scheduled into the court. Um, and then, you know, I'm not sure. By it spring. Would, <laughs> it would be a while. Um, but, you know, our, our main issue of having the spur hours, you know, the kind of deadline that we're working with and, and needing the old Cory Road. Yeah, that seems to be yeah. behind us at the moment. So, however much time it takes, um, right? I just uh, worry somebody comes out that road and drives into the Cabot Road without a stop sign. That's uh -huh. it. Well, it's pretty obvious that you're getting. Yeah, the yeah they're on private land. They're not on ours. Yeah. Is that the, if that's the case? Yeah. The yeah. attorney basically advised us not to do anything with it mm -hmm. at the last. Really? So, mm -hmm. so this is still. Mm -hmm. It's still yeah. Yeah. And it's He still took the sign out, so I guess yeah, the land will be on him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right now, it's private land until this decision has been issued, and then it could be mm -hmm. appealed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve um, the bid from uh, Sunwise Surveying um, of $1,650 to survey the spur at the top of the old quarry road um, that was the subject of our, our hearing. I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So I will sign this. Um, I think it was our goal at the last in our session to try to have this resolved in the end of November. Mm -hmm. yeah, frame, yeah, so by the end of November. The decision will be issued. So yeah. I think we're well on our way to yep. having that be accomplished. I don't anticipate it taking me um, very long to, to review those. Um, the recording again to get a little bit more specific um, and I, I plan on having that out for you guys to look at and for Michael to look at um, before our next select board meeting uh -huh. so okay um, so um, Randy isn't here to talk about the Swiss Swenson reimbursement but I did do a little thinking about it um, Just, I just could go over some scenarios. We don't again. We don't need to make a decision on this tonight. But um, so present, and I was working on the figure of uh, twenty-eight thousand dollars a year um, as the, the the money that we get from Swenson Quarry. I think it's a little bit more now, um, but I don't know for sure. This is kind of the figure that we've been using in the in our budgeting for the last few years. So um, so at present. Um, 40% of that reimbursement um, goes to the HERF fund, that's $11,200. Um, and then 35% of it goes towards uh, our, the town highway road salt budget, pretty much pays for our road the salt. Road salt yeah. Yeah, and that's $9,800. And then 25% of it was designated for the paving fund, which is $7,000. Um, right now the paving fund is pretty flush. Is about, I think there's about $46,000 in it. Um, so technically we could um, reduce the amount that we put into the paving fund, um, obviously, you know, and then build it up um, from there. Um, and that's something for us, to, that'll be kind of the biggest consideration that we'll want to consider when we're if we do want to change the percentages that are going into the fund. I mean, we're going to pretty much spend that we're going to spend paving a good next, portion next of it year, next year um, if we can get it done yeah. right. Yeah, and then we, of course, we have at some point we're going to need to repave um, the um, 
upper the catenary the part that's paid now, but it, that should be good for quite a few years. The damage um, we'll have to repair. Yeah, and, the, and then this section, I mean, the, the, this section on the Foster Hill Road is starting to crack a bit. Um, so you know, we probably would want to try to repair the cracks at least and use the paving fund for that. Um, but at some point, that would need to be replaced. The beauty of those, the, our two sections of paved road. Um, is that they're both class two roads, mm -hmm. which means that we're eligible for a fee trans paving fund. When we repaved um, the uh, Cabot Road, the section that's paved, um, most of that was paid through a fee trans grant. Now I think the town had to come up with about twenty thousand um, dollars, and it would probably be a similar expense. The two stretches of paved road up on Cabot Road and Foster Hill Road are about the same length. I think Kevin was probably a little bit longer. Foster Hill's in pretty good shape. So it is in pretty good shape. It's yeah, starting to crack a bit, but it's not yeah, breaking. Yeah, I don't want seal those cracks. Yeah, they've been, I think they've been sealed once. Um, I contacted, there was a company that um, I went to the road show a couple of years ago in Barry, and there's a company that will come and put a seal over the whole thing instead of so just sealing the cracks. The, yeah. I don't know how much it costs. Yeah. I, I um, sent an email and called the person to try to get a sense of how much that costs, I've never heard from back. Huh, I can't be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're based um, in somewhere in northern Massachusetts, so they would definitely have to have a... Just no chip ceiling over the state went through right. that, with arrow had to redo it. Right. Yeah. So just for, you know, to go over a scenario of, of changing the percentages, um, if we um, went to 50% from Swenson Quarry going into the hearth, that would give us $14,000. A year, we pretty much want to keep the salt at 35%. Keep that figure the same, because we pretty much spend all of that mm -hmm. towards salt. So, um, but if we went 50% herf, 35% salt, um, that would be 15% into the paving fund. That would be $4,200 a year. And then if we went 55% uh, into the herf, that would be $15,400. 35% for the salt, 10% for the paving fund, that would be $2,800 a year. Um, so it's, I think it's mostly we just got to figure out how much we want to be putting into the paving fund gotcha. each yep. year. Um, right now we have enough money in the paving fund to do to do what we want to do our next projects. Yep, we do. So for me, the more we can put into the HERF fund, mm -hmm. the yep. better yep. for now. Okay. Until we start expending some money from yep. that, then we can change the formula again. We yep. can, yeah, we can change this anytime. Yep. Um, it would well, be great to get that her fund to where we can pay for trucks. Yes. So yeah. Our, Even if we went one. with, made it the whole 15 went into that, so 65 percent for a while until we start spending some yeah. paving money. Yeah, we could we could look at that at least for a year fund. or two. Yeah. 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 I mean, right if, if we keep with our commitment to, um, we have the ninety thousand dollars a year for um, equipment, um, and and we've got to figure out how to do this. I. But um, so, you know, with the lease payments that we've been making or um, loan payments at this point, we not really lease payments, um, we're, you know, pretty much all of that $90,000 is going towards paying for, for trucks. Yeah, and, now, yeah. But we'll be, we'll be able to pay out less of that $90,000 towards payments for the, for the next few years anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll be putting more. So I think what I'll try to do is work out um, w without without the change, because this is kind of small change in a way. I mean, it's a thousand dollars, you know, either way. But we we'll try to work out um, a thing with a her so, so we get a sense of how much we are going to be putting in there. Um, yeah, yeah, I think we should work it a little backwards too. By yeah. saying, here's what we have for equipment to replace. Here's yeah. how much we got to put. Yeah, to make it work. Yeah, so it may and have require an adjustment on. Yeah. I realize we're paying in now, but work toward it. Yeah. yeah. So the road salt is probably right on the money. Or it's right on the money. Yeah. So we, we I mean, if we that, if we yeah. changed it, we would be we would have to be paying for. You're gonna pay it out somewhere else. Yeah. 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 Someplace else. Yeah. And the thinking behind that 35 percent was that well, I mean, most of the salt yeah, goes right goes there. towards that for yeah. the for the quarry, so it, it's yeah. kind of a direct benefit. Although, you know, we do have Foster Hill too, so we're, uh -huh. they're helping us with that. So we could cut it some, but it would just have to come out of come out somewhere else. else. Yeah. So, um, well, let's um, think about this. Um, um,
<coughs> and uh, I think you know, just getting a sense of what we want to be putting into the paving fund each year to, to build it back up. Um, you know, at 15 percent, we would be pretty much have it built up in four years to cover uh, repaving the Cabot Road. Uh, okay. With the it was. It makes sense to have that. Yeah. We're, you got the two other roads we got to do. Yeah. Yeah. So um, hopefully the new pavement will last ten or fifteen years. Yeah. Yeah, we've been lucky with the pavement. It has held up really well. For yeah. The traffic. Um, yeah. Skip kind of researched, um, you know, consulting with Pike. Yeah. Um, the mix and the thickness. Um, that's a special. That pavement is not your general yeah. put down the road pavement. It's it's was uh, kind of formulated and. Um, Designed for the to deal with the trucks, trucks from the quarry, yeah. so it should hold up. It should hold up for a while. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> of course, we've just cut a big hole in it. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll fix that as part of our next summer project. I was thinking that you know, well, obviously we it's too late. It'll, it'll be yeah, too late. It's not gonna happen this year. Yeah. So um. So we'll have to go up and measure it, and I'll add it into yeah, the big proposal for yeah. next year. Mm -hmm. I can just add another line item for the cabin, a little bit mm -hmm. on the cabin road. Yeah. Does that. They really haven't cut much of the pavement yeah. up. I think he's going to try to cut as little as, yeah. as yeah. possible. But we can fix it up in the spring with yeah. the other project. Yeah. The same yeah. So it won't be much. So yeah, yeah it's they've yeah. done a really good job so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other than <laughs> the, the big stone sides. <laughs> <laughs> That's our one word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll. Um, we don't have to make a decision tonight, but I, I, would, I was hoping Granny could be here to, to be a part of the discussion. But um, so we'll, you know, we'll be putting um, over a hundred thousand dollars into the HERF fund each, or we'll have that money towards equipment anyway. And how much goes into the HERF fund is depending on how much we're we're spending on our loans. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll it's getting more expensive all the time too, and we really yeah. haven't kept up with the no, pace. That's how for you that. get behind. Right. The same thing you got behind, and then mm -hmm. that's why we're spending so much right now. You got to catch back up, and then you can stay ahead of it. Yeah. Yeah. So briefly, um, just for the road crew report, uh, obviously they've been dealing with the underground tank. storage tank and the above ground tank, um, and they've been doing again more prep work, um, getting ready for winter. The They've been working on the plows. Um, they're pretty much all set to go. Um, pretty much close to hauling all the winter sand that's in our contract for this fiscal year. They've also been hauling um, quite a bit of gravel, um, just getting ready for mud season too. Okay, so they're stockpiling some gravel. Too. Stockpiling gravel. Yeah. Um, still within our budget on gravel. Yeah. 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 We're still within budget. You know, it's pretty much winter. Mud season, and there's not much time in between, and, and yeah. most of the uh, quarries are closed. Oh, really? Now? For a certain time into this, you know, they don't open until a certain right. time in the spring, yeah. so uh -huh. yeah. having stuff there is, is prudent. I think um, they've repaired the, the rake um, again in, in anticipation of mud season, and the, the uh, sifting winter sand. Um, Sifter, they did quite a bit of repair work on that. It was starting to bend and fall apart. Um, we're sifting out the frozen blocks when they're when they're getting sand for the trucks during the winter. Um, now, what about the 550? They still plan on running out this winter. It, it, so we, yeah, we spent a, a good chunk of money repairing that again, and they plan on using it again for salt um, yeah. for the winter. Salt so, um, the yeah. school and yeah. village. Yeah, it, it makes it so much easier. Um, you know the the. That truck can be loaded and ready to go, and it goes out first thing in the morning. Um, and then wh whoever, usually Greg does that before the rest of the road crew heads out, or and then he can jump right back into his into his truck and and load with sand. Greg or Greg? Greg, Greg or Greg? Or, <laughs> yeah. Greg, I think Greg Grizz pretty much the low pro is his his baby. His yeah. baby, yeah. yeah. So. Um, Although Greg, I don't, I don't know if it'll be the same this winter or not. I haven't heard. Um, and they've been continuing to. Grizz has been getting it, getting out and grading roads still. Oh, um, he's still grading. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And checking checking yeah, the weather still pretty well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. So like last year, though, the shoe dropped next week. Right. Yeah. 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 The shoe fell. Pretty hard. It can change any minute. Yeah. That's pretty much it for the road crew report. Um, I had. Uh, any any questions at all about any of the room, no. town highway stuff that we've gone over? No. no. Okay. So I had an update on the town hall roof repair, and um, uh, Peter is. I think the materials are going to arrive sometime this week. Um, 
we've got to figure out where he can leave them and actually maybe um, you can talk about that a little bit um, but the work hasn't hasn't been done yet um, so Peter is wondering where he, I think he's anticipating a delivery of materials on Wednesday um, where could he place it there in the you know could he put it between the town hall yeah, and the that's fire right. yeah fire that's station the reason that wouldn't affect us at all okay all right um, that should work I think the truck will drop it off and then he'll move it out behind the building by hand. Yeah, because they can just leave it between the two buildings, right? Over this, boom it over the ramp, maybe. I don't know if they can get it over the ramp. Oh. That's the problem. Uh -huh. The ramp moves, but it takes 27 people to move it. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, it's fine. I think he plans to be there when they drop it. Okay. He has the day off Wednesday, so that's the day he was going to start. Mm -hmm. But it's about when they can coordinate. Okay. So. Yeah. If they put it there on the pavement, then he's there. He's welcome to use any of that whole side. Would it be easier for him to, if they put it behind the fire station and then kind of walk? Can you walk on You can walk through there. Yeah. yeah. It it's easier. pretty tight though, right? It's not a lot of room. Probably, it's probably 10 or 12 feet back there. Yeah. If the truck could get back there. Yeah, they can back right up. Yeah, they can back right up. Where the dead pine tree up. is. We're supposed to take that down too. Uh -huh. yeah. What's the address of the fire department? Three three six six five. Yep, and they could, they, if they want to tuck it behind the building, there's probably enough room to unload it there. Perfect. Okay. And so it's a shorter walk. Is it? Could be short. Yeah, because yeah, it's 75 feet down between. It's only going to be. Yeah. Um, that kind of reminds me of talking about Peter, the, both of our part-time room crew members got drug tested today, I think. It was scheduled that they, that they would. Yeah. So. They come right here and do that. Yeah, come right to the garage. It's kind of amazing they don't do everybody when they're here. Why yeah, they I don't know how shoot? they... Yeah, they're going to drive all the way out here. Why not do the whole crew? Why not do everybody? Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't, I don't huh. know. <laughs> we just go, oh, okay. Yeah. Whether they, if there's a certain time period and they stay, you know, maybe you think it would be more efficient for them, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it on the agenda, amazingly enough. Sweet. Yeah. Wow. So, um... This never happens. I know. <laughs> Anything else? You need to complain about something. <laughs> so, I would make a motion that we adjourn. Awesome. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, until next time, we meet one. How, how do I describe a burn? <laughs>